Now that the Canon R6 Mark II has been officially announced, I'm going to make a video about my thoughts about the new specs now that they've been officially confirmed. The R6 Mark II is going to have a 24.2 megapixel CMOS sensor newly developed by Canon. Although the newly developed sensor from Canon is always a welcomed feature, it also is one of the largest disappointments for me. The rumors were saying it was going to be a BSI stacked sensor like the one in the Canon EOS R3, and that was what really got me excited about the possibility of upgrading to this camera. Unfortunately, those were rumors, or as I like to call them, lies. It didn't turn out to be the truth, so unfortunately this sensor will not use BSI technology. For those of you that don't know what BSI technology is, it's what's referred to as backside illuminated sensors, also known as back illuminated sensors. They're a revision of traditional sensor designs, which increase the light gathering efficiency of the sensor to deliver higher sensitivity, less noise, and better all around image quality. This would have been a massive step forward for the R6 line. Perhaps this was a little too much to expect at this price point, but this is why I hate when the rumors start flying, because I know a lot of people were really excited about this. The R6 Mark II has the same 12 frames per second mechanical shutter burst rate as the original R6, but in electronic shutter mode, it will have an increased 40 frames per second burst rate compared to the 30 frames per second burst rate of the Canon R6. Built-in image stabilization is rated up to eight stops. One interesting thing about that is Peter McKinnon did mention that when using wide-angle lenses, the R6 Mark II is yielding smoother results, meaning the IBIS wobble may be slightly better on this camera body. Hopefully that's going to be true because that's one of the things that definitely plagued the internal stabilization of the Canon R6. When shooting 4K 60 frames per second with the Canon EOS R6 Mark II, you will be capturing oversampled 6K video footage. Peter McKinnon noted that it does yield slightly sharper results, but really not a huge difference in comparison to the Canon EOS R6 oversampled 5K footage. You'll also be able to externally record 6K ProRes RAW video with an external compatible Atomos recorder, which is pretty awesome. The R6 Mark II the R6 Mark II utilizes raw burst mode with pre-capture, similar to the Canon EOS R7. The R6 Mark II will also have moving subject HDR mode, a 3.6 million dot electronic viewfinder capable of up to 120 frames per second refresh rates, 1.62 million dot 3 inch rear touchscreen, dual UHS-2 SD card slots, slightly increased battery rates, over the Canon EOS R6. One very pleasant surprise Canon decided to price the Canon EOS R6 Mark II at exactly the same price as the Canon EOS R6 at launch. $2,500 will get you the new Mark II, which I expected to be priced higher than that, so it's nice to see that Canon is actually putting it out at the same price point as the original R6. So I guess the big question is, am I going to upgrade to the Canon EOS R6 Mark II? Well, let's try to break it down, look at the specs, and see what the new Mark II would bring to the table for me over my current Canon EOS R6. When it comes to the sensor, the extra 4 megapixels would not be a large enough bump in resolution to be a main reason for why I would want to upgrade, although it's definitely a step in the right direction. We all know that the 20 megapixel sensor was always one of the main criticisms levied at the original Canon EOS R6, it's, so it's nice to see that Canon is listening and has helped to address that issue. Canon does claim that the sensor will perform better at high ISO values, as well as yielding better results in terms of rolling shutter, banding, and readout speeds. How much better remains to be seen. Personally, I've been really happy with the high ISO performance of my original Canon EOS R6 sensor, and I do think that the criticisms of the 20 megapixel sensor are overblown. In terms of ISO performance and resolution, for what I do, the OG R6 has been more than sufficient for my work. When using the mechanical shutter, you're getting the same 12 frames per second burst rates, but when using electronic shutter, you're getting 40 frames per second burst rates versus the 30 frames per second burst rates that you get with the original Canon R6. I mainly use mechanical shutter, and those 10 frames per second in electronic shutter mode honestly mean nothing to me. 6 6K oversampled video footage when shooting 4K 60 frames per second, that's something that I'm interested in. I don't think it's going to be a massive difference, I don't think it's going to be big enough of a difference to justify upgrading, but it's definitely intriguing. The R6 Mark II is going to allow you to do external recording of 6K ProRes RAW footage. Now I've never had a camera that allowed me to record in RAW, so that's definitely something that interests me, if for no other reason than to just experience it and learn how to process RAW footage. Unfortunately it's only externally, so you will need a compatible Atomos external recorder to utilize 6K raw footage. Increased battery efficiency is always a welcomed upgrade to any camera, but again not something I think would be worth specifically upgrading for. Canon is claiming to have increased thermal performance, which should lead to longer recording times 
before the camera overheats during video work. Now, I haven't seen any specifics about that, but that would definitely be something I'd be interested in that could be a very valid reason for upgrading to this camera body. It's also worth noting that Canon said there's increased subject recognition for different types of animals. Specifically, they mentioned horses, so if that's a particular subject that you might be interested in capturing, this could be the camera for you. What I'm seeing in the specs are incremental advancements and no real major reason for current Canon EOS R6 owners to need to upgrade. Yes, it's definitely a step above the Canon R6. Yes, it does have some welcome advancements there. And if I was in the market today, I would definitely pick up a Canon EOS R6 Mark II over the original Canon EOS R6. For someone like me that runs a YouTube channel and doesn't do any major professional productions, I don't see anything that the Canon EOS R6 Mark II is going to bring to the table that the Canon EOS R6 isn't already going to do sufficiently enough for me. I'll be sticking with my current EOS R6 for the time being, but who knows, maybe I'll pick up this camera body just to dissect it on this channel for you. I hope this video helped out. If it did, go below, subscribe, click that notification bell, and I'll see you on my next video.